I will admit I was not watching initially live last night as Denny Avia lost his mind in New Orleans. But after our discussion on the show with Linnell yesterday, all of a sudden I got a text from Linnell going, Denny. And then I was like, well, I better see what's going on. And all of a sudden, Denny Avia, who, if you were not listening at 5.30 yesterday or have not checked out our Wizards Talk uh, segment on the podcast or on YouTube, I said, look, he's playing a lot better. And that's very exciting and very, very encouraging. However, realistically, Denny Avia is not a top three player on a championship team. He's just, he's just not that guy. He's playing better. It's exciting. He's also averaging 13 points per game this season. Like, let's cool our, our, our Jets a little bit. On a championship team, he's somewhere between the fourth and seventh starter. Um, optimally, that like sixth man coming off the bench, maybe playing top five minutes on the team. Uh, but he's his role is like defensive wing, can score for you in a pinch, but not a guy you're relying on in any kind of way for consistent point production. Good day for me to say that when he then goes out and drops career high 43 points, Anthony, last night. Made me look like a real doofus. Or yeah. or, or did he? Uh, I mean, first of all, Linnell didn't only text you. He texted me as well. Uh, <laughs> and and I was so confused, like, what he was even talking about. Um, but, yeah, then he going out there. Uh, to be honest, I just think it was a good day for the Washington Wizards as a whole. Um, definitely a career night, and I d- don't want to take that away from Denny. But I-, I think, you know, as you pointed out, that he's just, you know, playing well this season. Like, I-, I think for the future, as we look towards the future anyway, we can, you know, confidently say we can see Denny playing a pivotal role as a role player in the, you know, foreseeable, f- foreseeable future. Is the thing is, say. Denny Avi was a ninth pick in the draft. He yeah. wasn't a top five pick. And if you get... A third, and here I I will make a I will I will mea culpa, Anthony. I might I'm actually willing to adjust my opinion. Okay. After seeing Denny Avia last night, yep. I think in the absolute right scenario, he could potentially be the third best player on a championship team. Like if he's got the best player in the league as his, as his number one guy, and a top ten guy as number two, and. By the way, the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh best players are not that much different than he is, but he's definitively the third where he's averaging 18 points and eight boards a night. Like, okay, fine. I can, at 23 years old, I'm willing to say that is that is beneath his ceiling or that is his ceiling, right? I'm not willing to go any higher, but that is his ceiling. Okay, fine. Maybe, maybe we see that now. But... That's really not that different than what I said yesterday. Being one of those top two guys is a very different story. And I think I think where I get sideways is there's a lot of Wizards fans that are like, we can't put a ceiling on these guys. We have to give them more shots, more opportunities, more, 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 more. And to use the analogy that I used yesterday with Linnell, like you can't bake a cake at 10 minutes at 800 degrees and expect to get the same recipe or the same results when the recipe calls for 400 at 20 minutes. You don't get to just give them more and get better results and, and think that's going to work. And, and, you know, that like, yes, you do want to give some of these younger guys more opportunities. And part of the reason Denny gets this opportunity last night is Kuz is out. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, he got more opportunities and he, he made the most of it. But, like, let's also be realistic about what Denny Avia did last night. Took 10 threes. And a lot of those were, like, or not a lot, but there was, like, a few of those that are, like, step back, late clock threes. And he made them. Like, I'm not trying to take away from Denny Avia. He, that's phenomenal. The fact that he even has that in his game as a possibility is thrilling. That's super exciting. But we don't want Denny Avia taking step back threes because I don't want almost anyone taking step back threes. I want Dame taking step back threes. I want Harden taking step back threes. I want uh, Steph taking step back threes. And I don't know if there's anybody else. Trey Young can take them. I don't know if there's anybody else in the league I want taking those on a regular basis. Now, if you get in a late clock situation and the ball's in your hands, great. But how many times has Denny had the ball late clock this year and fallen down? 
And I'm not saying that again to be like mean or be like, Mah. but he's having a great couple of weeks. And by the way, these great couple of weeks are coinciding with Brian Keith taking over. This clearly was a great move by this front office. We're already seeing dividends of the results of these young guys getting different and better opportunities and taking advantage of it. But I just want people to like, I, I will I will say a lot of Wizards fans when I tweeted it, like some of y'all need to chill out had great responses. We were all having good fun. It's like, it's a crap season. Let us have our fun. And I'm not trying to rain on your parade. The only people I'm trying to simmer down is the people that are like, well, when John Wall was 23, he had a breakout game like this. And then he was John Wall. Denny Avia ain't going to beat John Wall. If that's you, then yeah, you don't get to have any fun anymore. And you don't get to talk about basketball anymore. You need to go sit in the corner and think about what you said. But if you're just having fun with it in the middle of an otherwise crap season, have all the fun you want. It is what it is. And if, if that involves making fun of me for being a wet blanket, I'm willing to take that because I'm right here with you in the middle of this crap loss season. Denny Avdia goes out and he's John, and he's John Wall. Because he had one 40-point game. And look. In the season where more points are being scored than any in NBA history. There's hope for the season. I mean, there's hope for this team then. Yeah. Well, because that's that's the comes the discussion, right? Like the more serious turn on this is people think Bilal is definitely one of the building blocks, and I think they are correct. Mm -hmm. I think Koulibaly has been a revelation. Exactly where he is on that one through three pecking order, still TBD. I think most likely three, possibly two. I have a hard time seeing one, but he's 19. Who the hell knows? I he is someone that if you're like, don't put a ceiling on him, I'm a, I go okay. Because for all I know, he could grow another three inches. Like, that's the nature of him being 19 years old, right? So you have you have that part of it, right? Then the question is, do you have any of your other building blocks or are the guys that are here now mostly trade assets to acquire those building blocks or supplementary pieces? And that's where I think people are getting out over their skis. They see two good weeks from Denny Avia and go, oh, he can score 25 a night over this stretch. Like, maybe he's a 20-point guy, He's one of the building blocks. And I would tell you, he's doing it on a nine-win team at the All-Star break. If there are better players, he's not getting these opportunities and he's not going to, to put up these numbers. This is why I think the best version of Denny Advia from a team standpoint, like individual statistics, sure. Could he, could he average 20 in a season? Maybe. Team's not going to be very good, but maybe. But on the... On the team side of it, I think Denny Avia playing 30 minutes a night, averaging 16 points, 18 points, you know, seven, eight, nine rebounds, five assists. Like, that's a tremendously useful basketball player. That's not me saying, like, Denny Avia stinks. To be very clear, I understand how rare and good and helpful that basketball player is in the NBA. I think that's the best version of Denny. I don't want to say those guys are a dime a dozen because they're not. It's rarer than that. But I don't know that that is like a tent pole building block player. I think it's just below that. So I, I guess I'm trying to help protect you from becoming too emotionally attached to Denny Avia when I know he's 23 and it seems like, oh, well, the timeline thing. How can you talk about that? He's 23, still so young. But realistically, now he's ready to be that guy and be very helpful for a team, I think, in the next like three to five years. And I don't know, or for the next three to five years in his prime. And I don't know that the Wizards are, like the, the Wizards will be ready in three years, not ready for the next three years, if that makes sense. Which means they can probably get something good for him. And that's exciting. We like that. You know what he, else we like, Anthony? What? Jordan Poole took 10 threes last night. And, and he, he made five them. of them. Yeah. I think the person that I've been like most impre impressed with uh, the last couple of weeks, Tyus Jones, man. The dude just simply dishes out assists, doesn't turn the rock over. And uh, I'm interested to see, you know, what his future looks like here because, again, they can uh, re-sign him in the offseason. And I think he will be a good person, you know, to keep um, in the, the organization just because of how – productive he is um when he has the ball in his hand so uh Ty Jones yeah he, he he's been cooking another night 14 points 15 assists coming off a night where he previously had 14 points and 16 assists so 
I don't know. I, I, I'm loving what I'm seeing out of Tyus. I'm just yeah. saying, Tyus, since he's been on the show, <laughs> reverse effect of some other guys that have been on the show. Yeah. So I, we, we should do that math. We should see when we had Tyus on and see what his numbers are. I have to shoot the Wizards a note and be like, if Tyus, if Tyus ever starts slumping, you know where to send him. Mm -hmm. Do an old interview with the Hoffman Show. Bang, bang, bang. I, I didn't get a chance to say this with Linnell yesterday, um, but when it comes to Tyus, his value around a young team is so high. And I know like other teams, like eventually, do you want to probably flip him? Yeah, I probably would. But to have like an adult in the room and on the floor to keep things organized and to make sure that everyone's practicing good habits because they're not taking wild shots and they don't have to take on too much responsibility, that's super helpful in the development of young players. And we've seen it. You know, Chris Paul was essential to Shea Gilgis Alexander's rise in Oklahoma City. We've seen it before. And Tyus Jones is obviously not what Chris Paul was when, when CP3 was in OKC. Chris CP3 was still an all-star. Tyus is not that. But that role is so important, and, and Dawkins and Winger have seen that up close, which is why I'm actually not that surprised that they kept him, even though the contract is expiring and that they're interested in keeping him. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Gates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.